Tonight, 100 Australians from all walks of life are standing by to face the nation's biggest and smallest questions. Like how many of us think aliens live among us? Welcome, friend. And we'll reveal how many Australians use devices to track our own loved ones. It's all coming up on our future special of the 100 with a hologram version of Andy Lee. That looks incredible. And welcome to the future <gasps> themed episode of The 100. Again, I'm joined by 100 everyday Australians ready to ponder what life will be like going forward. For all of us, it'll be certain death. But before we get to that moment, we've got to be careful of this. Oh! <laughs> Tonight, I'm joined again by three great panellists. First up, He's an award-winning stand-up and radio host who in 20 years' time will be unrecognisable due to plastic surgery. It's Tommy Little. <laughs> Next, you might know him from Have You Been Paying Attention. He's a new father, so in 20 years' time, he'll feel 40 years older. It's Lloyd Langford. Oh, <laughs> and finally, she's been a singer, actress, model and TV host already. So in 20 years' time, I'm expecting she'll add doctor, jockey and Nobel laureate to her resume, Sophie Monk. <laughs> Let's jump into our first topic, technology. It makes our life easier, it's super reliable, and even our children are embracing it. Lata, play Dicker Dicker. Bobby, can you talk to play wheels? You want to box? hear a station for porn detected. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. No. Anyway, let's have a look at the stats on technology. Can I, can I just make a complaint about these outfits? Sure. Already? Mm. You don't like mine? No, I think you look fantastic. You look like you've walked off, like, the Starship Enterprise or something. Yes. But with this side part, and I look like some kind of space pedo. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to swap out then? <laughs> <laughs> uh, hands on buzzers, guys. 28% of Australians have used virtual assistants, like Siri, Alexa, for what? So... Cheating? On exams or like oh, no, a test. Not the answer. That no. would be the most obvious cheating ever. If you're sitting in an exam and you go, "Hey Siri, <laughs> <laughs> what, what's algebra?" <laughs> no, 28% no, of Australians use virtual assistants for what, Lloyd? Is it uh, remembering their partner's birthday slash name? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, these people probably wouldn't have a partner. 28% of Australians use virtual assistants for what? Wanking. No! <laughs> it's something if you are lonely. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will repeat. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Lloyd. Uh, like uh, pep talks. Uh... <laughs> so. Is it for, like, company? Company, yes! That's really sad. So 28% of Aussies are uh, using virtual assistants to keep them company. Is there anyone up there in the 100 that's good friends with their uh, virtual assistant? Aaron. Hey, Aaron. G'day, Andy. G'day, everybody. You use your virtual assistant for company? I, I use it for company. I use it for spelling when I'm writing an email. I use it when I'm up at the shops getting groceries and I have a speaker in my car. So then I can make an announcement in my house to tell my daughter to come down and help me with the groceries. Oh, That's right. really sweet. So when you get home, you can have someone yell inside the house, come and help me. I can do that from the car at the shops. Do you feel like it's your friend? Yeah, absolutely. I ask it the weather, I ask it what time it is, I set an alarm. Yeah. On, so how many of these assistants do you have across the house and the car, etc.? cetera? Uh, 11 in the house and one in the car. Andy, I have a question for Aaron. Yeah. Do you also use it for wanking? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. Aaron, thank you very much. <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't think I've got 11 normal friends. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next question. 33% of Australians feel what about new technology? Lloyd. Aroused? <laughs> no. 33% of Australians feel what about new technology? Oh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so. Threatened. I'm going to give it to you. Fear. Really? Yes. 
33% of us are scared about new technology. I wouldn't be too worried, though. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly. We actually hey. we signed that guy up for wheels. <laughs> uh, back on buzzers, guys. 38% of Australians steal from what technology? Lloyd. Those um, charity clothing bins. <laughs> no. From technology. <laughs> no, it's not the answer on my card. 38% of Australians steal from what technology? Is it like Bitcoin? No. I think it's a self scan in the supermarket. He's got it. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. 38% of us. You can also hide stuff in the mushroom bags. All right. <laughs> like, like. I'm just saying, if you're watching and you don't have a lot of money, the big supermarkets have a lot of money. So, put stuff in the mushroom bag. Uh, and, <laughs> I don't know. Also, and you just, just, just while we're on it, I mean, I don't want to start a revolution, but if you go to 7-Eleven as well, you can hide chocolate bars in the Slurpee cups and then fill them up, they'll never find it. <laughs> I don't feel like you should be saying this. Um, uh, Tommy does not speak on behalf of the program and to all our great sponsors in 7-Eleven or Woolworths. And definitely not me. I'm definitely not endorsing this. All you. right, let's move on. 14% of Australian homes have what type of robot in them? So, I've got a robot beside my bed that puts lights, like the galaxy, on my roof. They're for toddlers. <laughs> <laughs> Are they? You help me well, fall asleep. <laughs> Yes, you fall asleep. I fall asleep yeah. the best with lights, yeah. like... No, 14% of Australian homes have what type of robot? Lloyd. Is it one of them little um, vacuum cleaners? He's got it! Oh. Well done. Well done, Lloyd. Yes. 14% of us with a robovac. Has anyone up there had a run-in with their robovac, not doing what it's told? Uh, Graham. Oh, Graham. <laughs> uh, you've got a robovac not behaving itself? Yes, we um, set our RoboVac to clean overnight um, and one of our dogs dropped a really sloppy poo in the middle of the floor and the robot went through it, spread all over the floor around 2am. Oh. Wheels, brushes, collection bin. So we got, she got up in the morning, it was poo tie marks crisscrossing the floor, oh. um, clicking oh. poo it's up the, the walls. It's not robot's fault though. And it was during Christmas, so the tree was up and there were presents underneath, so oh. there was poo all over the presents. Oh. Um, unfortunately, Christmas morning we woke up and the same thing happened and we had to rewrap all of our presents again. Oh. That is horrific. Graham, thank you very much, mate. Appreciate thank it. You. I want those glasses. 14% of us have a robo-vacuum. Some family members find them extra useful. <laughs> That's so cute. Yeah. Off to uh, vacuum up cats. Oh. Um, <laughs> moving on. For 12% of Australians, technology has done what? Tommy. Increase the time they've spent on the shitter, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. But no. So. Is it like medical? Like, you know how they have the machines that go zzzz oh, yeah. for your heart? Uh, mm. Not specifically, but you're, not in the, but you're in the realm, Tommy. Oh, maybe I'm out of the realm then. I was going to say caused an accident. Uh, the opposite of that. 12% of Australians, technology has done what? Prevented an accident. Uh, <laughs> it, not exactly the opposite. Lloyd. Save their lives. He's got it! Oh. <laughs> I feel like someone's going to Well done, Lloyd. It's the end of the round. But going off that last stat, we should have 12 people up there who have had technology save their life. Is anyone happy to talk to us about that? There is? Fantastic. Stick around. We'll hear it straight after this. <laughs> Episode of the hundred, the show on the forefront of artificial stupidity. Uh, let's have a look at the scoreboard up there. Ooh, tight between Lloyd and Sophie. Tommy yet to score. Oh no, Tommy! Feels like high school yes, yet again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, before the break, we found out that twelve percent of Aussies have had their lives saved by technology. That's crazy. Tracy is one of those. Tracy, welcome. What happened, Tracy? So my husband travelled to New Zealand in March 2020 to, for a family birthday 
and they all went uh, mountain climbing. They were experienced. Um, and as they were coming down, a boulder that he was standing on just gave way. Oh my God. And he fell about five meters, landed on his side, just shattering his pelvis. Oh, oh, wow. oh. Right. And how did technology save his life? They took a personal locator beacon, a PLB, and so his sister set that off and that alerted the emergency services who then contacted the owner, who was my husband's mum, and she said, if that's set off, it won't be an accident, and that everything went into motion. Wow. So do they send out, like, helicopters or rescue operations straight away? Yep. So the helicopter took about an hour to arrive and then my younger sister-in-law, who was also there, is a medical doctor. Oh. So they were able to travel um, with him in the helicopter to Rotorua Hospital. Wow. And how's the pelvis now? He healed up very, very well, is doing great now. <laughs> great stuff, Tracy. Really appreciate it. Thanks so much for sharing. No worries. Thank you. All right, time for our next game. This one's called Matchem. <laughs> Panel, in this game, we're going to see four different technological gadgets, and your job is to match who in our hundred owns and frequently uses each one. <laughs> Let's meet our owners. Okay. We've got Kelsey, John, oh, Emma, God. and Eugene. <laughs> Hi, guys. How are you all? Hey. Hi. Hi. Here we go. Here are the different technologies. We have one that owns a pet camera. We have one that owns a fingerprint activated door lock, an e-scooter and also a Thermomix. Your job, guys, is ask a few questions and see if you can determine who owns which. Um, my first question would be to the, my favourite person in the world, John. <laughs> um, John, were you aware it was a dress-up episode? <laughs> <laughs> I did get the heads up, yes. Yeah. Hey, John, what's happening in the future there? Turn into an alien. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any questions for Kelsey, John, Emma or Eugene, guys? Um, Eugene, uh, <laughs> you look like a man who would follow kind of uh, law and, and particularly order. Um, <laughs> is security of something that is um, that you're scared of? No, I have no problem with security. OK. Because um... he just uses the force. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, uh, Soph, question um, for anyone? Kelsey... Do you have a cat or a dog? <laughs> no. Or a dog? Oh, do you see she no wins? Cat. No cat. Dog. No cat. You have a dog? I do. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, Emma, if you uh, suddenly lost both of your hands in a freak accident, <laughs> would you be able to get back into your house? <laughs> uh, no. She says no. <laughs> Which doesn't necessarily mean it's fingerprints. Could be. <laughs> it just means that she's up against no, the doorknob. No, she couldn't use her key. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't use her key. That's very cute. Um, uh, any other questions, guys? Emma, do you make a mean um, homemade hummus? Yes. OK. Uh, John, do you live close to your work? Not really. Because oh. you're unemployed, aren't you, John? <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, any other questions? I just reckon John's got them all. <laughs> <laughs> I'll ask the question of Kelsey. Would you if, be confident cooking anything in your house if it was requested when people arrived? Uh, look, I'm a terrible cook, so no, probably not. If you wanted to live... <laughs> OK. I mean, my air fryer is my best friend, if that helps. OK. It does a lot. You, you know what? I, I don't have any... More questions because I'm trying to just judge which one looks like they've got the nicest house that they would protect with the fingerprint. <laughs> and it's Kelsey by a mile. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's lock it in then, OK? Let's go with the fingerprint activated door lock, Tommy. That's the one that you are keeping an eye on. Pop in your digi pads. Do you think that belongs to Kelsey, to John, Emma or Eugene? Write that down now in your pads panel. Oh, uh... Let's see what our panel came up with. Oh, we've got one Kelsey and two Eugenes. Why'd you say Eugene? Sorry. Yeah, anyone that keeps their neck that safe keeps their <laughs> house safe. <laughs> <laughs> well, would the person who owns the fingerprint activated door lock raise their hand? Eugene! Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, and Lloyd get the points. 
Well done, you two. I think we've got time for one more. Obviously, Eugene's out of the question. Which of the other three in Kelsey, John and Emma owns the pet camera? Pop it in. Is it Kelsey, John or Emma? Who do you think owns the pet camera? OK, let's see what the panel came up with. Oh, all split. Why John for you this time, Tommy? The camera question about the guy with a thousand photos in the background. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, Kelsey for you, Lloyd. Why? Kelsey explicitly said she has a dog. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't passionate about it. Could the person with a pet camera please raise their hand? <laughs> yeah! How the hell does Lloyd do it? <laughs> what a savant! I honestly he spent knows the, the whole future. time. I spent the whole time looking at everyone's backgrounds and not listening to a word they <laughs> said. Uh, the Thermomix belonged to Emma, who made a hell of a mean hummus. Uh, and the e-scooter was John's. Well done, guys. Thank you so much for playing. Before we go to the break, I want to ask the whole of the hundred this. If you've got a pet camera, have you caught your pet up to anything or someone else doing anything on your pet cam? Has anyone got... There is. Right, we'll find out that story straight after this. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> It's our future-themed episode. Uh, before the break, we asked if anyone up there had caught a scandalous act on their pet camera. Um, Louisa, you had one. <laughs> <laughs> Louisa, you're actually from the same planet as John, I've noticed. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you catch on the pet cam, Louisa? Um, my dog actually dived off the back al fresco and she tore her ACL. Oh! <gasps> What's your, what's your dog's name? Zeus. Zeus? <laughs> yeah, there's Zeus. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Louisa, did you realise that she was hurt and that's why you went back through the tape? Yeah, we go through our camera footage quite often, actually, to see what's happened. <laughs> oh. Louisa, thank you so much for sharing. Really appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks, Andy. You see plenty of strange things on pet cams. You might even catch your dog doing this. Yeah. How did it turn it on? <laughs> <laughs> I guess it was on outside. Yeah. Or it's insurance fraud and they're just sending the dog in. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, it's time to play Pick the Percent. <laughs> Our Pick the Percent tonight will be all about the future as we ask the 100 a range of questions, OK? Questions like, how many of us would marry a robot? And if you own that robot and then got divorced, would you have to give half of it back to itself? <laughs> Something to ponder. Anyway, panel, your job is to work out how many of our hundred will answer yes to these questions. Ready to go? Yeah. All right. What percent of the hundred have been hacked? Hundred, pop your answers in. Have you been hacked? Panel, how many have had that done to them, do you think? Results are in. Let's see what the panel came back with. Oh, very split. You think eighty-five percent of us have been hacked, Tommy? Yeah, I, like I've been what? hacked so many times. Have but you? when I when I used to drink a lot, I used to get hacked. It was weird. At the same time, every Saturday night, quite late, mm. and all they used to do was go into my Instagram account and message my exes and tell them <laughs> tell them that I missed them, <laughs> and I still think about them often. <laughs> and if it can happen to me, it can happen to anyone. <laughs> Let's see how many of our 100 have been hacked. 28%. Lloyd just wins that one. Oh, no way, Lloyd. <laughs> what the hell? Well done, Lloyd. He's come from the future. Yeah. He's winning. He's got the almanac. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's see. Anyone up there want to tell us about their hacking experience? Nikki, you've been hacked, Nikki. Yes. Hey, Nikki. Yes. Oh, my God. So, about two and a half years ago um, on Instagram, I woke up and my friends had actually written me a message and said, is this, you know, your new profile? 
And I'm like, no. And it had little bubbles and they're like featured where you can click it. And it was a video and they were explicit videos, but like head down. So they created an OnlyFans of me. No. And I freaked out. So I, like, Nikki, I were, they using, Instagram. were they using a picture of you on the profile and then the lewd stuff wasn't including someone's face? Yes. Oh, yeah. that's, so that's so Was she awful. hot, though? <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. Uh, not as hot as me. <laughs> 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 Nikki, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. <laughs> thank you. Next question. What percent of the 100 use tracking apps on their partner or family members? 100, pop your answers in if you use tracking apps on your partner or family members. Panel, do the same. 100, pop in their answers in. Tucked away. What about panel thing? Ooh, a little bit split. Just 5% you think, Lloyd? Yeah, it's quite a rare thing. Though, um, I've got a toddler and I've just had her chipped. Hmm. <laughs> Get, get, get them down the vets and get them chipped. Yeah. Thirty percent, you think so? Yeah, I would put like an apple tag inside me if I could. Really? Like, Why? Oh, hang on, that, sorry, word, you... that was very wrong. <laughs> hang on, let me reset. Let me reset. <laughs> oi, oi. <laughs> like you'll have to subscribe to the OnlyFans. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> yeah. um, anyway, so <laughs> why would you want an apple tag, air tag? In your body? In case I got kidnapped oh. or, like, I get lost a lot. Like, I'd share my location with everyone. <laughs> really? Yeah. So do Wouldn't you put you? find it's your friend? No, I don't want people knowing where I am. What about Beck? Would you let... No. Really? <laughs> no way. Tommy, 35%. Yeah, I think it's people with their, with kids. Oh, OK, yeah. And I think if you've got a partner and they've, they're they tracking you, break up with them. Oh. OK, really? 100, how many yeah. of you...? Oh, I think you've cheated on them and then you should have to wear a neck collar. <laughs> oh, 30%'s the answer, so it gets a boy! Dropped it! Tucked in, Lloyd. I've got one. Uh, this is a bit of a controversial one. Oh. Obviously, it's our future-themed episode. What percent of the 100 don't think climate change is real? <laughs> Pop your answers in, 100. How many of you don't think climate change is real? How many of them are over 50? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is really controversial. Yeah, well, the 100 represents the perfect cross-section of Australia. So all ages, all demographics covered, all states and territories. Oh. What do you think? Results? Let's have a look at the panel. Ooh, 30% for you, Soph. Yeah, I just think it's like... I don't know why, actually. Oh, I don't well, know. Don't, I don't like politics. What? I don't like controversy. He, he always asks for a reason. Sometimes you don't have to give him one. Go that's true. Yeah, exactly. Just tell him... I that's... just think 30%. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. <laughs> fair. fair enough, fair and enough. while we're at it, go fuck yourself, <laughs> Andy. <laughs> uh, I will. <laughs> uh, let's see. How many of our 100 don't believe in climate change? 23%. So if you get the points on that one. <laughs> I would have thought it was higher. It's, it's, oh, no. it, it feels so weird to clap to. Yeah. You're like, doesn't oh, it? Hey? Yes. <laughs> yeah. 23%. Wow. I mean, that's quite uh, confronting and a little bit depressing. It is. Uh, so here's a cat wearing a pineapple helmet. <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> We're back. Get up. All right. Last question for the round. This one's about technology in the workplace. What percent of the 100 have lost their job to AI? Oh, I hope not many. Pop your answers in, 100. Have any of you lost your job to AI? Panel, do the same. Results are in. Panel, what'd you come up with? So if 1%, you think? Yeah, I'd hope not many people. Yeah. Uh, like... Lloyd, do you think 17%? <laughs> These look like a bunch of people that could be easily outwitted by a robot. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. They do not. <laughs> Let's see how many of our hundred have lost their job to AI. No way. One percent. Oh my god! Double high five. One solitary oh, no. person. We've got to go to a break. But does that person? Are they happy to talk to us about it? They are. OK, we'll find out what happens straight after this break. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Welcome back to the 100. 
We're looking at all the stats on the future tonight. Before the break, we asked if anyone in our 100 has had their job affected by AI. Madeline, you said you have. Yeah, so I actually only have a job because of AI. Oh, oh slightly different. Mean? So what do you mean? How did it come about? So I'm actually an editor, so I get a script from AI and then I have to edit it because quite often it's really, really wrong. OK, so what, is it you a copywriter or something? Not really. I can't actually say what I work in legally, but, yeah. Should we believe? Thanks. Well, can you give us a, like, kind of a clue? Is it, like, is it for scripts for products or is it in the legal system? Or it's, is... Yeah, it's kind of more legal. So, Madeline, again, it, we're, we're kind of treading carefully, but... Are you telling me that the company may use AI to write certain things and you have to make them more human? No. So it'll hear something from someone else and then it'll produce a script from that. It could be tap it, phone tapping and stuff. Can so I you say... you reckon that's not a guitar, that's a gun in the background? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've, probably, we've probably asked too much. Madeline, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. You can't understand the future without first studying the past, so it's time for a brand new game called You Used To Be Cute, What Happened? <laughs> In our next game panel, we're going to attempt to reverse the ravages of time and figure out which member of our hundred belongs to each baby pic I put up. OK. So let's bring out the first photo. This is baby Trevor. Oh, what a little cutie. Yes. Is adult Trevor this person, this person or this person? Oh. Oh, I think I know. It's A, B or C. Pop your answers in, guys. Can you take Just, your headphones off? Yeah, I was going to ask the same. OK, can you both all take your headphones off? Oh, oh OK. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, can I ask one more question? Can you put a funny little Disney hat on? <laughs> 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 A, B or C, guys? <laughs> Which one do you think is Trevor? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, the panel are putting their answers in. Let's see what they came up with. <laughs> <laughs> That's the cutest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Unanimously B. All right. Could the real Trevor please raise their hand? Yes! <laughs> Trevor. <laughs> oh, what happened to the birthmark? You got rid of it? No, that's a little bit of hair, so. No, that, that's no, a hair. Isn't it a suction mark from when they pulled the baby out? <laughs> I've had more hits than Elvis. I've run into everyone. Oh, right, oh. so it was a bump back in the day. Aww. Trevor, what year would that have been? Early 80s? Ooh, 1978, 79. Okay. Well, you're gorgeous. You are yeah, gorgeous. Okay. Thank you so much, Trevor. I really appreciate it. <laughs> wow. No problem. That's Thank awesome. You very much. From Trevor, <laughs> let's have a look at our next one. This is Baby Corey. Oh, Baby Corey. Is adult Corey this person, this person, or this person? Pop your hands in. A, B or C, do you think? Can you guys smile? All of you have a smile. I'm trying my best. No, you <laughs> can. <laughs> OK, pop your answers in, guys. OK, let's see what the panel came up with. Wow. Bit split. <laughs> Why do you say C, So The smile on the teeth and she's so cute. Right. Just like that picture. I just think that's what? it. You're very confident with a uh, Lloyd. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll bet you $50,000 it's E. Really? <laughs> Definitely E, and I'll fight anyone that says otherwise. <laughs> Will you give $50,000 to the audience if you lose? <laughs> Maybe say no. Let, let's wait for the result. <laughs> OK. Will the real Corey please raise her hand? Oh, my hey! God. <laughs> well done. 50 grand. <laughs> Roy. No, I get the... Corey... I thought, I mean, so if I thought C was perhaps too young for that vintage a photo. Andy. With all due respect. To... Andy. <laughs> Andy. Andy. Not one other person thought that. Definitely not Lloyd. And definitely not you. Because, <laughs> uh, Corey, I think I'm of the same era. Was that kind of an early 80s type photo? 
Might have been late 70s, but... Yeah. Least... Well, you look gorgeous. Well, you're so cute and you're still oh. cute. Thank you. Corey, thank you so much. Thank well you. done. <laughs> Points went to Tommy and Lloyd there. And we've got time for one more, I reckon. Uh, this is Baby Shane. Oh. oh, goodness gracious. Black and white. Can so I that kiss might be a cue. Uh, is sh adult Shane this person? This person? <laughs> <laughs> or this person? Oh, it's really tough. OK, pop your answers in. Which one of those is adult Shane? Take your headphones off. <laughs> <laughs> um, All of you, thank you. A, B or C. Oh, this is tough. OK. One. Can you take your hat off, B? Oh. OK, OK. Oh, no, I think I'm wrong now. OK, yep, yep, I'm resetting. Oh, OK. He's changing it up. Let's oh, see what our okay. panel came up <laughs> okay. with. Lloyd has got all them right so far. We've got a C, a B and a C. What made you say B, Soph? Um, the cute little face and the little ears. And I looked at his right ear. It's very curved like the cute little baby. <laughs> um, so the but ears. having said that, C looks like a baby still. <laughs> 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 Do you reckon? If he yeah, was in a diaper, I'd be like... I do. Uh, Lloyd, do you think C? Yeah, the curvature of the nostrils. <laughs> oh, I didn't look out for that. Well, that's what you should look out for. He's oh. obviously the best player at this game. With the person who owns that photo, please raise their hand. Who is adult Shane? Yeah! Oh, yeah. Unbeatable, Lloyd. Well done. Tommy, you also get the points on that one. Uh, Shane, what year was that photo taken? 1973. Oh, who is your doctor? You look exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a cabbage patch. He's so gorgeous. Yes. <laughs> and old Shane, thank you so much for playing. Thank really you. appreciate it. Thank you. Awesome. Stick around because after the break, we'll learn all the stats on the future of travel, like how many Aussies still get lost while using Google Maps and how many of us would ditch travelling for a VR experience. See you soon. <laughs> Episode of The 100, the show is still waiting for the hoverboards promised to us by Back to the Future. Uh, the scores are up there. Ooh. And it's very tight between Soph and Lloyd. Lloyd, why do you have a double L with your Lloyd? Is it a silent L and then Lloyd? <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it meant to be Lloyd? <laughs> it's, it's Welsh, it's, and you're being racist. Oh. <laughs> Maybe I should call myself Soso. <laughs> A little bit of banter. She wants to win this, Lloyd. Plenty of points mm -hmm. up for grabs. Let's get into this next bit. The future of travel is very exciting. Within the next decade, they say we'll be able to fly from Sydney to London in just two hours. Isn't what? That wild? It's a game changer. Obviously, there's many advantages to having a quicker flight. I think the main one is not being next to this person. <laughs> I'm a little bit jealous. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's actually one of my exes yeah, that I mentioned trying. earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Hold oh, it up. Oh. So, it's not bad. Yeah. Not great. We could I, stow you away comfortably I, in the overhead compartment. I, I, think. I, would, I would try that, but my nappy is at capacity. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, put your phones on airplane mode and your seat's in the upright position because we're going to talk about future travel. <laughs> Hands on buzzers, guys. When it comes to cars, 73% of Australians don't trust what? Lloyd. Princess Diana's chauffeur. <laughs> <laughs> True, but not on my card. Uh, no, when it comes to cars, 73% of Australians don't trust what? Tommy. Uh, their wives driving? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, that can't be worse than Lloyd. <laughs> <laughs> Weirdly, it is. I don't know how. Uh, so. A car that drives itself? Yes, self-driving cars. <laughs> Next question. In the future, 39% of Australians would happily replace travel with what? Tommy. Regular sex. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not on my card. Uh, Lloyd. Staying home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no. So. VR headset? You're right. Am I? Yes. <laughs> it's the best. Yeah. It's scarily good. Um, well, I mean, 
Speaking of that, who up there in our 100 has had a VR experience that has been really good? Uh, Joshua. What was the experience? One of the younger cousins in our family got, like, the VR headset thing for the PlayStation. Yep. And I didn't know much about them back then, so I was pretty... Uh, I was easily convinced to have a go at one of the games on there, the shark cage dive. Oh. Yeah, you go down in the water and nothing happens for a while and then sort of towards the end, the music gets real dramatic and scary and this big shark comes out of nowhere and breaks into the um, cage... And, yeah, I think the rest will leave to imagination, but it was really realistic and graphic and probably made me realise a shark cage dive isn't for me. <laughs> yeah. You know, Can I explain, you know though, is, like, VR, like, you, it does immerse you. Like, yeah. you can hear the audio right inside your brain and visually it is so scarily real, isn't it, Josh? Josh, thanks so much for thanks, joining us, man. really appreciate that. Thanks, guys. So there you go, 39% of us will replace travel with virtual reality. Sports can be replaced as well. OK, when you hike the ball, you gotta, you got to hold the right trigger <laughs> down. Blue, 42! Blue, 42! It hit. feels so real. Hold, keep it held down, and then... Don't move! Don't move! Oh! <laughs> Done that before, too. Yeah, he ended up in a virtual ICU. Um, all right, next question. In the future... 13% of Australians are open to moving where? So. Noosa. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I went too quick. It's real good. <laughs> it's good. Uh, it's no, weird. that's it's not. Lloyd. It'll be like the moon or Mars or some some Oh, you can't do two. <laughs> Mars. <laughs> the, the moon. It's a, it's a Mars. Mars. Space. You can't. He said Just give us or. something. Mars. I'm going gonna, gonna, to... I haven't got one no, actual legally. point. No, legally. You can't. I haven't got one actual point. You I've can't. sat. I've uh, sat for nearly a whole hour with two pieces of... You've only got duct tape. Yes. <laughs> Why didn't I get duct tape? You've got duct tape. You've got it there. I've got yes. duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder he hasn't got any points. <laughs> you cannot um, give Lloyd with a double L another point. Don't give it to Lloyd. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I'm going to level you can't with you. You moon or Mars or, like, Venus or I, Jupiter I, I, or... I, I really don't care about winning. <laughs> and I so do. You, I really you, you care. Can, you can have it if you want. No, but I really uh, But you've care. got to pick, you you got to pick one of them. I know you care so much, so... So, so to keep the peace here, uh, Lloyd's correct, Mars. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Lloyd. Still time. Yes. Still time. Thirteen percent of us would be happy to move to Mars. Some dogs have already adapted to the change in gravity. Oh no! Did it leave? Oh. I said she should have gone. Dogs are so smart. <laughs> <laughs> Next question: Forty-two percent of all current robots are used where? Factories. What kind of factory? Robotics. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh. They make cars. He's got it! Oh, wow. What a point! <laughs> wow. Andy, Andy, and answer me honestly. Can I still win from here? <laughs> no! OK! <laughs> uh, but Tommy's got it. Yes, 42% of all robots currently in the world are used in the car industry. It is the end of the round. But does anyone in our hundred work with a robot? Oh! There is someone? Well, let's hear about that straight after this. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Welcome back to The 100. Before the break, we asked if anyone up there works with a robot. Oh. And Stephanie does... Stephanie. Stephanie. What is the robot you have to work alongside? So I work in a hospital and we use AI technology to help us to conduct colonoscopies. Oh. oh. So how did the AI work <laughs> that? Very carefully. <laughs> <laughs> so when we are looking through the camera lens inside your body, there's yeah. a screen in front of us and the AI technology spots abnormal tissue and highlights it so the doctor can decide whether to resect it or not. Oh, so it's basically detecting cancer, potential cancerous cells. Yes, exactly, yes. Does that mean the guy is out of, or, or girl that used to feed a camera up your bum, are they out of a job? 
Well, we still do that, but oh. the AI helps us to make decisions about what we see. Oh, so so the, the, another... ca the, the camera still goes up, the AI recognises yes. the yes. danger spots. I don't think I know what AI is. <laughs> <laughs> but I want one in my box. <laughs> um, <laughs> Stephanie, thank, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. It's the end of the show, so it's time to announce tonight's winner. Come on. Oh, <laughs> and tonight's champion will be cryogenically frozen and put on display for future generations. <laughs> that honour goes to... Leloy Langley! <laughs> <laughs> well done, but it's not about you guys. Yeah. It's not about you guys, it's about the folks up there this show. And tonight, we've explored all things futuristic, but high-tech gadgets and sci-fi innovation isn't for everyone. So to finish up, I want to go and find the 100's biggest Luddite. Who up there do you think is stuck in the past? 100, to close this out, if these statements apply to you, keep your camera on. If not, you can switch them off and leave the show. Here we go. If you only have one email address, keep your camera on. The rest of you, goodbye. A lot of those people signing up to some pretty naughty sites. I've only got one. Two. OK. Wow. Hotmail too. If you still have a library card, keep your camera on. Otherwise, switch off. Are there Goodbye. still libraries? Yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> really? <laughs> OK, didn't lose as many as I thought. Um, if you don't have a Netflix account, keep your camera on. Otherwise, switch off. Yeah, there's people using other people's Netflix. Games. Yeah. <laughs> a few more disappearing. All right, if you don't have a social media account, keep your camera on. Otherwise, turn your camera off. OK. Gee, I'm going to need more questions. Um, this will clean a few out. If you've sent a fax in the last month, <laughs> keep your camera on. We might end up with no one. Who are they faxing it to? With someone else with the fax machine? They're just faxing each other, these two. <laughs> oh, it's back! <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're all gone! <laughs> Who's that? Stephanie! Oh! Our bum explorer! Welcome back! Yeah, that's right. So, after your um, AI colonoscopy at my hospital, yeah. If your doctor requires you to have a medication or scan, I have to make that request by fax. Oh, my gosh. I <laughs> cannot believe you sent a fax in the last month. Uh, Stephanie, it's earned you the right to sign off tonight's show. What would you like to say? Just remember, Andy, time is immaterial. Despite everything we've heard tonight, the future is still in our hands. Oh, lovely. Very poetic. <laughs> Profound. Thank you, Stephanie. That was like Shakespeare. A huge thank you to everybody up there tonight and a huge thank you to our fantastic guests tonight. And to finish up with our future theme show, we're going to have a play with augmented reality and give you a glimpse at home as to what our guests will look like in the future. A what? Yeah. So thank you very much to Sophie Monk. <laughs> Tommy Little. <laughs> and Lloyd Langford. <laughs> And from old man me, if you want to be a part of The 100 or in our audience, you can go to the100.live to register and we'll see you next week if I have the energy to do so. Gee, my back's a bit sore. Good night, Australia.